let's move on to question number 3 firstly i would like you all to find out this question in your practice manual please pause the video and find out this question the question is ending till here so please find out the question in your practice manual i hope you all have found out this question in your practice manual what the question says the question says jkl limited has the following balance sheet as on march 31st 2016 and march 31st 2005 they have provided us with the balance sheet and they have provided us with the income statement of the jkl limited for the year ended is as follows so this is basically pnl account okay so you can write it like this pnl account besides this okay firstly write the following things in the balance sheet please write capital employed over here since it is sources of the front that means liabilities its total will be capital employed and the applications of the fund its total will be total funds employed or total assets i hope this is quite clear if you want the explanation how to read the balance sheet you have to move on to the previous videos that is first and second videos of this particular chapter so that you can be getting the deep understanding how to read the balance sheet okay Huh. after reading the balance sheet and seeing the income statement we'll move on to the required part what the question want us to answer the question want us to answer the following calculate the calculate for the year 2005 and 6 so that means you have to specifically calculate for this 2005 and 6 means 1st april 2005 to 31st march 2006 i hope this is quite clear you have to calculate inventory turnover ratio you have to calculate financial leverage this is a part of leverage but i'll solve this part right now you just don't worry you simply copy that part when i'll be teaching leverage you will understand that part you don't need to come back and see because it is that easy just for the sake of completing the sum so that when during the exam you are referring it you don't find it out incomplete and you have to sit and solve okay so i am doing that return on investment roi return on equity roe and average collection period that means from the data what we are collecting okay and they have asked give a brief comment on the financial position of jkl limited this part i will be handing over to you all please you all write that or memorize what the practice manual says because it is a person to person to give a comment passing a comment people are very expert i have seen many many of my viewers pass nice comments so you all are very expert doing that you can do this or memorize that so let's move on to the first ratio that we have to calculate that is inventory turnover ratio the formula is cogs upon average stock in the previous sum question number two also we have came across this there we have taken cogs equal to c why because i told you to refer the older videos because the cogs formula was opening stock plus purchases plus direct expenses less closing stock in the previous video that is question number two we have assumed that there were no closing stock that means cogs equals to sales okay i hope that is quite clear and average stock we have re uh, removed average from that particular formula because the data was of one year only and we have to calculate one year but here already the data is provided of the two years so that means we have to take average stock into consideration okay so let's move on and calculate the inventory turnover ratio and always remember inventory turnover ratio the final output that is the final answer of this ratio will be in times i'll write that but I am telling you in advance. The COGS is already provided in the income statement. To how to read the income statement, I will make you understand in the leverage chapter. So do not panic right now. Just understand COGS is given to us. We have to substitute the value over here. And we have to take the COGS of the current year only. Do not take of the previous year or do not be in a dilemma. Which should I take? Current year or the previous year or should I take average? No average because if average we have to take we would have written the formula average cogs i hope this is quite clear cogs is equal to 20860 average stock is equal to 2867 plus 2407 it is given in the question do not think i am writing on my own 
सो फाइनली टू जीरो एट सिक्स डिवाइडेड बाई टू एट सिक्स सेवन प्लस टू फोर जीरो सेवन डिवाइडेड बाई टू विच इज इक्वल टू टू सिक्स थ्री सेवन विच इज़ फाइनली इक्वल टू सेवन पॉइंट नाइन वन टाइम्स आई होप दिस इज क्वाइट क्लियर एन राइट यर एन इम्पॉर्टेंट नोट फॉर दिस इज फॉर योर ओन बेनिफिट ऑलवेज राइट टाइम्स इफ यू डू नॉट राइट टाइम्स यू मे लूज मार्क्स आई विल गिव यू एन एग्जाम्पल इफ यू हैव ऑलरेडी अपियर्ड फॉर आई पी सी सी एंड यू हैव अपियर्ड फॉर दिस स्पेसिफिक पेपर यू मे हैव एक्सपीरियंस दिस यू केम आउट ऑफ द एग्जामिनेशन ऑल एंड यू आर सो कॉन्फिडेंट दैट यू मे गेट सिक्सटी प्लस दैट इज एग्जामिशन और फिफ्टी प्लस एटलीस्ट यू आर यू हैव नो टेंशन फॉर दिस पेपर ओके एंड वेन द रिजल्ट कम आउट at the result day you see your result and you finally see your marks that time you find out paper 3 you get 30 plus or max to max 40 marks you are just passed that time you feel why i am getting so low marks you are getting such low marks because you are not writing all these things this all things are important in financial management each and everything are important you have to always remember this so that's why always You you write this so that when you are revising one day before your exam, you do not do all this silly mistake and lose your marks because you are already doing all this all things right and because of writing this small thing times you are losing marks. So just imagine, okay. Second, this financial leverage. Just simply copy. Do not use your brains over here because it is very simple formula. The formula is also simple. E B I T divided by E B T. Okay, EBIT refers to earning before interest and interest and tax. Please make a bracket and write earning before interest and tax. And EBT stands for earning before tax. Okay. See, you can find it over here. Earning before interest and tax. EBIT is given to us. That is one seventy. We'll write simply one seventy here, and you you underline this. Okay. Profit before tax is our EBT. Earning before tax. Okay. Profit before tax, that is earning before tax. So we'll simply substitute the value over here, and we'll get the amount two point nine eight. This is the ratio. So two point nine eight is the ratio. And the most important thing in the practice manual, they have found it out the ratio of two years. But the question has not asked us to find out the ratio of two years. They have specifically asked us calculate for the year two thousand five and six. so you all can specifically cut this off and simply calculate this okay i hope this is quite clear let's move on to the third for third ratio that is return on investment it is very simple the formula is n pat n pat so here you can see profit after tax it is written pat so i am simply writing it and but that is net profit you can also write it over here net profit after tax which means n pat okay n pat divided by average capital employed okay average capital employed into 100 okay into 100 so n pat is 34 and please please do not do this mistake do not take the amount of previous year or do not take the average of uh, ebit or ebt or npet simply take all the things of current year okay please do not do this mistake this is all the silly mistakes average capital employed will be from the practice manual we'll see capital employed year total is 5947 Five nine four seven plus four five 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 divided by two. That's four forty four divided by five two five one into hundred, which is equal to point six five percent. Please calculate on your currency and see. I've already calculated in the rough, so that's why I'm writing it over here. If I am wrong, you can at least rectify your answer in in your. Books, okay. Just do not buy blindly copy. At least check from your Kelsey. Okay, am I calculating right or wrong? Okay.
I am calculating right, but I am saying such because it will develop a habit to calculate fast. Okay. So let's move on to our fourth ratio, that is return on equity. Return on equity. The formula is again N PAT divided by average shareholders fund into 100 and pet is 34 average shareholders fund will get from here shareholders fund is this so we need to write just a second 2377 plus 1472 divided by 2 okay so here 34 divided by 2377 plus 1472 divided by 2 which is equal to 1924.5 memory plus 34 divided by memory recall which is equal to into 100 1.76669% or you write like this 1.77% approx and always remember again write always remember remember to write percentage symbol wherever I'm sorry symbol wherever necessary do not put blindly any symbol it gives a wrong impression and also write approx if you are doing approximate okay this all things are important this all counts I've already told you if you do all the silly mistake then from 50 you directly come to 30 or 40 now finally the last formula average collection period which is equal to the formula is average collection before finding average collection we have to find out debtors collection so uh, sorry we have to find out debtors turnover ratio so we'll simply first write the formula average collection formula is we'll assume one year is equal to 365 days in the notes please write this part assumed one year is equal to 360 days okay i'm taking 360 days divided by debtors turnover ratio okay so we'll continue here first we'll find out debtors turnover ratio sixth debtors turnover ratio which is equal to sales divided by average of debtors dr plus br that is bills receivable so we'll find out in the question that is the balance sheet they have provided us with the debtors there is no bills receivable so we'll take the average of the debtors sales is given over here and all please please take of current year <coughs> 22165 <coughs> average of datas will take that is 1495 plus 1168 divided by 2 22165 divided by 1419451165 divided by divided by 2 which is equal to 133 1.5 memory plus 22165 divided by memory recall is equal to 16.646639 pence that is 16.65 times approx okay so this is our important Thing, final output 
so we'll just substitute it over here 16.65 times so therefore 360 divided by 16.65 which is equal to again 21.62 days you think logically can they be calculated like this 21.62 days so we'll simply if even always remember if 21 point if even it is 0.1 or it is 0 0.05 also take it to the next day okay always take it to the next day 22 days okay this is quite simple so we have completed the question number three so i firstly i want you all to pause the video and copy the sums fast pause the video and copy the sums I hope you all have copied this much. Pause the pause the video and copy the remaining, if any. I hope you all have done. Huh, please pause the video and copy. I hope you all have done. Please pause the video and copy. And write the note. I think you all have forgot this assumed one year is equal to 360 days very important thing I hope you all have done this